What's going on guys, Josh from EverydayFBA.com back with another reprice it tutorial. The one I did last week went over pretty well, you guys seem to enjoy it. But I wanted to dive a little bit more into it to help you get a complete control of your repricing strategy. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about templates and creating multiple templates to help you reprice your inventory more strategically. <music> Alright guys, we're inside Reprice It and I created these five templates to show you guys as an example in this video. And we're going to go over these small differences in each one and I'll tell you about why these are tiered the way they are and how they're going to affect your inventory. So first thing I will say about templates is you need to make sure that they're ordered in the way that you want them from the first thing you want repriced to the last thing you want repriced because it's going to follow this exact order. So that's just something to keep in mind there. And with templates, you know, there's a lot that you can fine tune and kind of section off parts of your inventory. There's whatever kind of creative, imaginative things you can think of, you can probably do with these templates. So there is no one set way. But for me, as a used media seller, I would want to tier my inventory by age. So that's what I have set up here. So we're going to look at new first. And if we just go inside this, you can see it's a new and template order. It's number ones because I want it to be the first thing done. It's so looking at my new items that are from zero days to 30 days old in my inventory. So this right here is the difference on each of the templates. All of the rest of this is the same. I'm only comparing FBA items. I'm looking at all sales ranks. I'm looking at all price ranges. I'm looking at all conditions. But what the listing date and how old my inventory is, uh, is what's going to change in these templates. So this is new inventory. It's not even 30 days old. Once it gets past 30 days, it's going to go into this one which is looking at listings 30 to 90 days old. And again, you see all this information, the same sales rank, pricing, all conditions. I'm looking at all my inventory. I'm just being specific to how old they are. So once three months is done, we go into the sixth month and this is looking at inventory from 90 days to 180 days. Then nine month, we're looking at 180 days to 270 days, which is nine months. So this is looking at inventory that is in that time frame. And then lastly, we'll start looking at stuff that's going to be approaching the long term storage fees. So we're looking at stuff that's 279 months up to one year old because I want to get this stuff out of my inventory before it hits a year. There's really no reason to keep anything in inventory for over a year, especially if you know, you've lowered the price and you lower the price and you're trying to get it sold and it has not sold. There's no reason. So uh, one year is kind of my cutoff. I don't want it in my inventory anymore. So this is definitely going to be the most aggressive one and we'll look at these settings on that but that's just how i got them ordered you know we start with my new inventory that's just listed and then we build up to long-term storage fees things that might incur long-term storage fees i want to get out of my inventory so we'll look at the repricing settings on each one of these and i'll show you the slight differences between them so these are the settings for my inventory that just got to amazon you know it's brand new listed and it's going to go up to 30 days in age so these are the settings i have for that i'm going to exclude acceptable condition i'm going to exclude just launch sellers and i'm going to exclude seller ratings uh, below 90 percent. so i'm excluding these other people because i believe that you know my feedback my reputation uh, it's going to speak for itself. And since this is brand new inventory and I set my price, I set my initial price very effectively to get a sell, then I don't really want to do a lot of comparing to other people. I want to try to get that price that I initially set. So you're going to see in the other templates that this starts to change a bit. Minimum allowable price. I'm not going to allow it to price below $15.99 because like I said, I still want it to be optimistic about getting the sell and that price that I want at that price point. So I don't want it to price below $15.99. So you'll see this change as well. And then the other thing that changes is going to be the competing offers. So this is what you're going to compete against. So the higher this number, the more offers you're going to take into consideration and the more conservative you're going to be. So default is six. I'm just going to keep it at six. That's good for me. So if pricing goes down more than this percent, 10 percent, then I do not reprice. Again, this is brand new inventory. I set my price, my initial price very effectively and methodically. So I don't want it to change too much within that first 30 days. Down here, we're repricing using intelligent pricing. And that's pretty much it, guys. All these other settings are going to be the same on the other templates. But what changes is going to be this section, what to include what my minimum allowable price is going to be, what offers am I competing against, and at what percentage do I want to initiate a repricing. So that's the new inventory one. 
We're gonna look into three months. So from 30 days to 90 days, this is what I'm repricing again. So 30 days has passed. I set my initial price. I did just slight repricing to it probably, but it still didn't sell. So now it's going in to kick into this template. And now I want to uh, uncheck these boxes. So now I don't wanna exclude acceptable offers and I don't wanna exclude just launch. This is gonna make me just slightly more uh, competitive and aggressive, right? The only offers of sellers I'm now excluding is anybody with a seller rating below 80%. Minimum allowable price now drops. Now it's $13.99. Now we're starting to get a little bit more aggressive in pricing. Number of offers to compete against. Again, we're dropping that number down. We're going to start looking at the bottom four offers. If price goes down more than 30%, then do not reprice. So we're starting to bump this up a bit, but we don't want to go too crazy with it yet because we still want to see if we can get a good amount of profit. We want to reprice, but we want to keep those profits. And that's kind of the point of making these templates is to reprice strategically. And as your inventory ages, get more aggressive with that pricing. Again, here we're going to use intelligent pricing and that's pretty much it guys. So you see the stuff that's changing already. The offers that we exclude, the lowest price that we'll offer, and the amount of competing offers. Diving into template number three, this is the six month. Again, we're gonna get more aggressive. So now we're only excluding seller ratings below 70%. Pretty much we're including all offers at this point. We're gonna be competing with everybody. Minimum allow price, $12.99. Again, we drop it just a little bit so we can be more competitive. Same with the competing offers, we drop it. We're only looking at the bottom three. We wanna compete with those guys. And if it goes down more than 50%, then no, I don't want to reprice. Again, it's, the number's getting higher. I'm getting more aggressive, but I still want to try to hold on to some of that profit. And then again, we'll use intelligent repricing. All right, now we're going on to nine months. Now, again, this is going to stay the same. We're including pretty much all offers. We drop that minimum allowable price just a little bit more because we have to start competing. We have to start thinking about getting this stuff out of inventory. We're going to be looking at the bottom two offers being more and more competitive. A big change as we go into nine months is I want to reprice my inventory at the lowest possible competing price. So I want to compete for that offer. And the reason is I want to sell this item. It's been in my inventory nine months. It's time to go ahead and move it out. And finally, guys, we're going to look at the long term storage fee one. This is for items that are in inventory from nine months to 12 months. Hopefully this is like the final pool to get it sold. And a lot of this stuff is the same. Again, we're not excluding any offers except for sellers below 70 percent rating. But basically, you're not excluding anybody. You're competing with everyone. Drop that minimum allowable price down to $10.99 this time. $10.99 is like the bottom line. I do want, do not want any media item in my inventory to sell for less than $10.99. Once you start getting below that level, you're going to start to lose money. So anything that is priced $10.99 in my inventory, I go in manually and look at that and reprice from there. Number of competing offers to compete against, we're looking at the lowest overall. We want to compete with that lowest offer. And we're doing that here as well. Repress my inventory at the lowest possible competing price. I want to get this stuff out of my inventory before long-term storage fees hit. That's a pretty quick overview of how to create templates and how to tear them up and how to effectively price according to age. Like I said, you, whatever you can come up with, whatever your imagination can come up with, however you want to segment your inventory, you can do that with these templates. If you want to reprice only FBA items, if you want to reprice against merchant fulfilled sellers for specific pieces of inventory, like you can go as deep and granular and detailed as you want with it. So there you are guys, go ahead and start playing around with these templates and tailor them to your business needs. My name is Josh, everydayfba.com is the website and I'll catch you guys on that next video.